If you grew up in an immigrant household, chances are Thanksgiving was anything but normal in your house. Think spicy masala chicken instead of roasted turkey. And growing up, all I wanted was the quote-unquote regular Thanksgiving meal instead of all these random cultural twists, but now I'd have it no other way. This year, I'll be sharing 11 unconventional Thanksgiving recipes, so follow along. If you're in charge of mac and cheese this year, you have to try out this recipe for the creamiest and the crispiest oven-baked mac and cheese. For the prep, all you have to do is mince some garlic and grate three types of cheese, which could be a little bit tiring, but it's worth it. While you boil your macaroni in salted water, we're going to work on our sauce, so you're going to melt down some butter, add a flour, and create a roux. Once that simmers, you're going to add the heavy cream, garlic, cream cheese, and all our spices. Mix that together, and then we're going to add in our Kobe Jack, smoked gouda, and sharp cheddar cheese. Combine that with the macaroni and then transfer it to your baking dish for it to roast in the oven and then we're going to broil it at the end to get that crispy cheese. Welcome to episode 4 of my Thanksgiving dinner series. Today we're making southern style mac and cheese. First, start off by boiling one pound of elbow noodles and add chicken bouillon to the water for extra flavor. Shred a block of Monterey Jack, white cheddar, and sharp cheddar. When your noodles are finished, don't rinse them. Put them into your baking dish and add a half a stick of butter. Into a saucepan, combine 12 ounces of evaporated milk, one cup of heavy whipping cream, and all of your shredded cheese. I seasoned it with everything listed. Give your sauce a mix and then pour it onto your noodles. You can either stop here or add more cheese and put it under the broiler for a few minutes. So good, y'all. Make sure to follow for more Thanksgiving recipes. This year I'm taking over Thanksgiving dinner for the first time. Thankfully there's Butterball. They come pre-brined which keeps it juicy and tender. I prepared the turkey following the package directions and stuffed the inside with aromatics for added flavor. Roast the turkey uncovered, then when it browns, cover with foil. I used the turkey calculator at Butterball.ca to see how long to cook. Butterball has you covered to ensure your Thanksgiving dinner is as seamless as possible. Thanksgiving's only a month away and that means it's time for my yearly practice turkey. When it comes to turkey, I like to keep it real simple so I don't do any type of brine. I just rub on some olive oil and season it with salt, pepper, garlic, and barbecue seasoning. This year I'm using Cameron's Turkey Done Right. It cooks the turkey upside down to help keep in more of those juices while leaving that skin nice and crispy. That turkey goes in the oven at 325 for about 15 minutes a pound. I brush some melted butter over that skin to help it stay nice and crispy about every 45 minutes. This thing will hold up to a 25 pound turkey and it's super easy to break down for storage. This is a great Amazon find and I've got a link in my bio if you want to make your holiday cooking a little bit easier. This 13 pound turkey took right at three and a half hours to come to temp and then I wrapped it up for 30 minutes to rest. There's really nothing like the start of the holiday season. 
My little sister refuses to eat homemade mashed potatoes. The reason, she thinks they make her choke. So she only eats those weird powdered boxed kind. She's gonna kill me when she sees this, but I make mine by peeling some russet potatoes and then I slice them into chunks. I add the potatoes to a large pot and cover them with cold water. When you're boiling potatoes, you always wanna start with cold water. Add in a tablespoon of salt, then bring them to a boil and boil them until they are fork tender. Drain them, season with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Add in some butter, some sour cream, some milk, and some shredded cheddar cheese. Combine it real well, and there you have it. Creamy, dreamy, delicious mashed potatoes. What do you prefer, homemade or boxed? Okay, so if you're looking for the perfect Thanksgiving side, look no further. Palm Anna is the potato dish to make. It gets gorgeous and crispy on the outside and creamy on the inside, and it's really fun to play around with. So I put sage in my recipe, but you can use rosemary, thyme, you can even use spices, and it's just about layering really thin slices of potato with butter and then letting the oven do the rest of the work. It's amazing. Make it. Thank me later. Is it normal to get emotional over dinner rolls or am I just nine months pregnant? You have got to save this recipe for your Thanksgiving table. Over medium heat, combine the following ingredients to make a quick little bread paste. Whisk continuously until it forms this thick paste, then set aside and let it cool. In a separate bowl, add in half a cup of milk and one tablespoon of active yeast. Give that a good stir and let it rest for 10 minutes. Your stand mixer, you're gonna combine the following dry ingredients and give it a quick whisk. Next, add in your yeast milk mixture. Using your dough hook attachment, you wanna start working this into a dough. As it's going, pour in one egg and one egg yolk. Next, add in that paste we created. Allow that to stir together, and then once it reaches a ball like this, add in three tablespoons of salted butter. Let that mix around for five to 10 minutes. Then add your dough ball to a greased bowl, cover it, and let it rest for two hours. Once it rises, give it the punch it deserves, and we're gonna split this into nine equal parts. Simply roll those into little balls and add to a greased baking dish. Before baking, brush them with a quick egg wash, just a little bit of egg and a splash of water. Add to a 350 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Of course, finish with butter and flaky salt. I hope you guys try and enjoy. Follow for more Thanksgiving recipes. Broccoli and cheese casserole is one of my all-time favorite Thanksgiving side dishes, so I'm going to show you how I make it. But first, I had to go to Walmart and pick up my secret ingredient, which is Dano seasoning, which we will use in a little bit. But first, you want to boil your broccoli for five minutes and then put it on a cutting board and chop it up into little pieces. And you want four cups of chopped broccoli. Then to a bowl, you want to add your broccoli, a quarter of a yellow onion diced, one can of cream of chicken soup, one cup mayo, two eggs, 
one cup cheddar cheese, and a half a stick of melted butter. And once that's stirred in, we are going to add a tablespoon of Dano seasoning. I love Dano's because this is all the seasoning we're going to need. We don't need to add anything else. We're then going to add this to an 8x8 casserole dish and top with one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. And then we're going to crush up a half sleeve of Ritz crackers and put that right on top. And you're going to bake this at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. And that is it. Absolutely delicious. And I cannot recommend this side dish enough. That looks really good. Yeah. 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 And on the counter too. Okay, pour the sugar. Kharba. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. i to go this is a Yum. Mm. Mm. 